This is Mildred from Sweet Sugar Plum Home. Decor idea. Guess what? We're taking the time out, y'all, to celebrate what? New Year's Day. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Oop. So what I do? So, y'all, what we're going to do is we're going to cook our New Year's dinner. And we're going to have comfort food today. Okay? We're going to have some beef ribs. If you don't want ribs, substitute it with some other kind of vegetarian meat like uh, Maybe you could go to the store and get some tofi. I think it was, what was it? Tofi? I think, Nene, what's it called? <laughs> it's called tofi. Tofi, yeah. yeah. And you can replace it with meat. And there's another thing that they have. It's in a can that tastes almost like meat. But meanwhile, we got a meat lovers around here. So we're going to do the beef. Like everybody said, where's the beef? <laughs> so here go the beef. And we're going to make a honey glazed beef. Okay, so this beef is going to go in the oven. You can take some of this skin off, y'all. Because we don't need all of this. We don't need all of this. And this helps it where that it's not soft. A lot of people don't like eating this. So I take it off. As y'all can see, I'll take it off. And what I did was I soaked the beef ribs in some apple vinegar. Okay, y'all? Yeah, this is this is a scissor here for the kitchen. Um, and you take that and, of course, throw it in the garbage. But let me rinse the meat off, y'all, real fast for everybody. And this meat is going, is now ready to, I already rinsed it once. Yeah, already rinsed it once. But make sure, if you don't want it so departed, yeah, get as much of that stuff off as y'all can. Yeah, because it was soaking in, um, apple vinegar. So... Um, this is our dinner for New Year's Eve, everyone. So what we're going to do now, you can pat it dry if y'all want. Put it in the pan. Can everybody see? Hello, my beautiful YouTube family. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, y'all, is I am going to, um, uh, you can go back on everything now. So we're going to take this. It's beef ribs. We took off some of the skin off the back here, so it won't be too tough eating. A lot of people take these off now. And if you want, if you don't know how to do it, leave it alone. It'll come out pretty good, okay, if you know what you're doing. But beef ribs have a tendency of being tough, y'all. So what I do is I try to take as many, as much of this off as I can. Can can y'all see what I'm doing? Let me move that out, y'all. Okay. I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is take this layer of extra skin back here off. Okay? Yeah, you could use a knife. You could use this. And sometimes people just take it like that and leave it open so that the air can get in. That's all. You can do that too if you want to. But I already did a lot of it already, y'all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bathe this meat. We're going to, um, you know, we already have our season here. So this is also a scissor, I mean a stirrer. So we're going to take this. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. I think I forgot. Some of my season is dash. Okay. Dash is good for people who don't can't take a lot of seasoning. Put the dash on like so. Okay. You could do like a, a tablespoon of this if you want. But you know I'm going by eyesight because I'm used to cooking. But those of y'all do who do not use to cooking, y'all do what y'all can you can put some chive on this beef rib. Because remember, this is going to be honey what? Honey mustard. Yeah, mustard. Uh, honey mustard uh, beef ribs. You got it. So, um, we're doing it like this. I'll be flapping this sucker over, you know. And um, now that we got that, and then we're going to put our salt on it. Okay. The salt is already in the basin anyway, y'all, so don't put too much on it, okay? Don't put too much if y'all not a salt person, because dash alone is a good seasoning, okay? That's for people who don't, can't eat salt, low salt. All right, and then what we're going to do is put our accent on here, which give it the meat, a meat flavor. And then what else we're going to do real fast? We're going to put some little bit of larsen on here. You know, this seasoning here is a good blend seasoning. Just flip it. I got more ribs to cook, y'all, but I'm just doing this for y'all for the uh, uh, the camera. Okay, so we got mustard. This is the grainy mustard because remember what y'all want is that honey 
roast it. Oh, y'all, we didn't even open it. So let's open this. This is the new bottle. We use a lot of this in this house because we use it on chicken, our steak, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to do that because we're moving along. People have things to do for New Year's. Okay, so put your mustard on there on both sides because you're going to put the other mustard on too. See, I already made a mustard sauce with honey. Yeah, and other things in here. Yeah, you see that mustard sauce? That's going to go on that wrist when it gets almost cooked. Now, beef has a tendency of being tough, y'all. So put a little bit of meat tenderizer on it if you don't trust it. What I do is I like to tenderize it with the vinegar a little bit. Okay, so we got all of that done now. And then we're going to put a little bit of paprika on there. <clears throat> you don't want to over-season it, okay? And there you have it. Now we're going to throw this in the oven. Now I have some more stuff here. I got rosemary. I got uh, red pepper. Just put it on, rub it on. Believe me, when you put the water in it, on it, for it to bake, or the olive oil and um, butter, it's just going to de-season it. ain't going to stay in, y'all. It's going to just dissolve, you know, dissolve itself. So then now you got to rub it in here. Flip it back over, throw it in the oven, y'all. Now, before you throw it in the oven, you should have a little bit of water in here. But if you don't want water, like I told y'all, it's just not, I got to see my hand, y'all. So, <clears throat> you come over here. You can do like, base it with a little bit of olive oil. Or you can base it with some canola oil will help too, y'all. So put it in the top. Measure it with this top. Go around like so. Like that. One more. Okay, put it on top of him. And throw him in the oven. You can put foil on it, but let it cook for about 15 minutes before you put it uh, the foil on. So here we go. He's going in. Okay. going to now make the macaroni and cheese. Okay, so let me get my stuff for the macaroni and cheese, y'all. And I hope y'all can see it. So, yeah, we, we're going to have some mac and cheese. We're going to have um, honey glaze, um, beef ribs. And guess what, y'all? We forgot to take out the squash. We're supposed to have roasted squash. So let me get, I'll be right back while Nene show you all this. Yeah, so, um... And the strainer, the strainer, yeah, okay. So let me just look and see where is the butter not strong. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so this is the complete product right here, butternut squash. We're going to take the squash out. We're going to roast it. First, we're going to um, sizzle it in a frying pan with some olive oil and butter without seasoning on it. Whatever season you, you prefer on this, you can put it on here, okay? So we're going to uh, do that. And then next, we're going to put it in the oven. Uh, you can put maple syrup on it. You can put corn syrup on it. And let it cook the rest of the way. And you have that nice, sweet butter squash taste, okay? And if you don't want the roasted butter squash, you know you can make your um, butter sauce soup. Yeah, if you have a blender or if you have a food processor, and once you cook it and boil it and put your seasoning in it, blend it up. Put some onions, I mean, I'll uh, uh, stir fry some onions, put it in there, and just suck it on up, y'all. With some cinnamon in it. Cinnamon, yeah, cinnamon is good. Okay, y'all, so let's get to, I know, I don't think all of y'all can, can see me, but I'm going to try and do my best because I'm filming on my own, okay? Everybody's at work in here. So I have my sweet potato on over here. That's what you see boiling. So now we have to take out the beef ribs, y'all. You see them? He's cooking. So now we're going to glaze him for the next part. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to tell y'all, um, you can also sizzle beef ribs in um, a frying pan with some um, canola oil, okay? And then, not, not for a long time now, y'all, okay? Just about three minutes on each side, then throw them in the oven. It helps kind of give it that uh, soft softness of the beef. Okay, so we got the macaroni and cheese here. But first of all, let's finish the, the beef. We're going to finish the beef. And I don't know where to put them at. So, uh, let me get my strain. I have all my stuff out. Somebody put it back in. Oh, God. All right, here we 
got that back. So what I'm going to do now to make my macaroni and cheese, as y'all can see, macaroni and cheese, and I'm going to do the old-fashioned way down south. And my mother said use the carnation milk and a little bit of milk if you have it. And sometimes they, um, the cheese, you have the cheese melted in there. So we're going to put this in here. I know y'all can't see, right? But it's going down in a strainer. Okay, y'all? That's where it's going at. Going in a strainer and let the water drip out from it. Okay, can y'all hear me putting it in the strainer? Good. And then once we put it in the strainer and we drip out the water. Oh, let me see y'all. Just one minute. Drip out the water, right? We're going to pour him into the cheese. Yeah, I have cheese in here. And then after we do that, we're going to let that cheese melt a little bit. Yep, see, it's cheese. Yep, it's going to cheese. And, okay, so we're going to, let's finish up the ribs, y'all. Then we're going to put that back on. Now I'm going to show y'all that, okay? So here's the ribs. And if y'all have a brush, you can brush this on. Let me see if I got my brush here. Because, y'all, I can't find anything when you got more than one people in the house. It becomes chaotic. And you get a little mixed up. Okay, so now we got our mustard glaze here that we made. Okay, can y'all see it? Okay, that's the mustard glaze. Yeah. So we're ready to put this on the ribs. I'm going to try to bring the ribs over to y'all so y'all can see me put the uh, glaze on. We'll put that over there for the time being the macaroni because we'll do that next. You got the butter, one egg. Put a little bit of mustard in the uh, macaroni, okay? If y'all want to stop before me, okay? And then we got to do this next, y'all. So, let's get started. Let's see where we at. Oh, I know what I was going to do for y'all. I was going to bring him over so you guys can see him be glazed. All right, so. All right. There he goes. Hope everybody can see him. I'll move the squash out the way, right? Okay, we put the squash over there because we're going to make that roasted butter squash. We'll be good with some. And then when we come back, y'all, we're going to do like an Indian-style rice. And this Indian-style rice will um, have raisin in it. And guess what else? Mushroom. So, yeah, y'all going to be eating good. Now, um, if you don't want that, just put the raisin in it. You don't have to put the mushrooms in it, okay? You can just stick with the raisin. Um, it's like a yellow rice. You're right, yellow rice. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that for him. And this is some good ribs, y'all. So what we're going to do now is we've got to bathe both sides, y'all. So we're going to flip them over. Flip them over. Excuse my hand, y'all. Yep. And we're going to, oh, it tastes good. The sauce is very good, y'all. And then we're going to keep the oven on 350, okay? Because this is meat. And what we're going to do now, once we bathe it, we're going to keep some of this moist in here, okay? Ooh, it tastes so good, y'all. It tastes really good. So there you go. You have your beef ribs being basted with the mustard. Don't that look good? So, let's get the foil. Yep. And we're going to take this foil to give it some moist now, okay? Then we'll take it off again. Once it cooks a foil, it takes about... Yeah, I would say if you, if you got a good stove and you got it cooking right, it'll take about about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, this rib, if you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like I say, you, if you saute it first in, um, in a frying pan and then put it in the oven, yeah, about an hour and 15 minutes, y'all. Okay, so let's get them in here. And you want this to be tender. So here he goes. He's going back in the oven. And I'm thinking, let me check my sweet potato for my yams. Okay, this is my yams being cooked with the sweet potato. And we're going to cut that up and we're going to make some candy yams. Yeah, that's pretty good now. So we could turn him off. You just cut him up in little uh, circles or however you want it. Okay? So we turn him off. He's ready to... Uh, we put this back over here. Because we may need some more sauce, y'all. Okay, let's get in with the macaroni and cheese. Now, while it's hot, you just keep stirring. I need a spoon. Let me get a spoon, y'all. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. Okay, I got a spoon here. 
So you just keep stirring this. Yeah, it's going to eventually melt. I hope y'all can see me. Yeah, I only got, uh oh, I, oh I, thought I, I thought I lost everybody here for a minute. Yeah, keep stirring. Somebody likes a lot of cheese? Okay, wait, well, I have to melt this in first, and then we'll put the, some more cheese in it, but right now we have to melt what we have. It's at the bottom, some of these cheese, so. Yeah, because remember, I pour it over it. So, and you keep stirring. Keep mashing the cheese in. And when we do this down south, we don't stop until this cheese dissolves itself, believe it or not, y'all. Yeah. And you got to get some good cheese, though, because some of these um, type of cheese will not melt itself into the macaroni really good for y'all. So, get some real good cheese, okay? Or cheese that you know. Uh, will melt fast into the um, yeah you could you, you can do shredded cheese you're right if you want to you can do some shredded cheese okay y'all I'm gonna have to get my glasses y'all because I cannot see right now what I'm doing so bear with me okay so we gotta stir this until it melts see it's starting to melt y'all yeah it's starting to melt yeah uh huh I know it's starting to melt and we keep stirring and keep stirring it until it melts down into the macaroni. And and see, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. You got to do it while it's still hot, the macaroni. And have the macaroni al dente. You don't want it to cook too much, you know. So there you go. You see your cheese melting down in here. Yeah, it's melting. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get like that consistency you want when you eat it. Yeah, you wait. Y'all wait until I show y'all this at the end. A lot of people say, I know this is the old-fashioned way. It really is, y'all. Don't put nothing cold in here yet. Not even an egg. Okay? Not even an egg. And if you want it to melt some more, what I suggest you to do, if it's not doing well with this type of cheese, and believe it or not, y'all, this is Cracker Barrel cheese, so it should be doing what I want at this point. Very good cheese. Okay. Yeah, we're going to keep melting that in there. some napkins and stuff here all right so that's my um that's my microwave y'all so all right so now y'all what we're going to do we see look at that y'all see how that look now it's the cheese is melted down in there that's what you want that consistency okay and I think I have a little bit more butter. Yeah, use a stick of butter. One stick of butter to do. Some people use a, a, a stick and a half. It depends on your taste. Yeah, right. So, um, or I think I put salt in here already, but I'm not a salt person like some people are. So, um, it's going to taste good anyway with the mustard going down in there. And then all you do is put a little bit of mustard in there. And, let me, and some of the carnation milk. But my mother used to use this kind of milk, carnation milk, y'all see? And she would put some, oh, it come out nice and creamy. Okay, so let's get over here. I got some of this milk you can mix in too, y'all. Okay, so let's get over here. Yeah, I think I got enough salt in it. If you want, you can put black pepper in there. Okay, if you want black pepper, what put black that? pepper in there. She... Yeah. What was that? What was that? Butter. Oh, that was butter. Yeah, so I, I um, went to get the butter. The butter is, is heated up, y'all. So, and I pour it in there. I might have did too fast. But now, look at this consistency. You see? Look at it. It's melted down. There's no lumpy much cheese in here no more. <laughs> no, sorry. So, that's what happened when the macaroni gets a little cold. You can... Um, yeah, somebody said I can eat it like that. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, so now, if you want, you can put some more cheese in it. Uh, now I have cheddar cheese, y'all. So you can shake some of that in there. If you like it cheesy, go right ahead. Some people use flour to make the uh, consistency. I'm, like I said to y'all, I'm doing the old-fashioned way. Down south way, my mother. Okay, so here we go. We got some... Um, 
mozzarella cheese. Is that good, y'all? And um, so we're going to put that in there. And we're going to put some of the carnation milk wherever I had it at. You can pour some of this milk, too. I would put like about two tablespoons of it. Right, two tablespoons. And I hope that's, ooh, my hands are kind of heavy. But I say two tablespoons or... Um, I was about to show y'all a measuring cup. Put a little bit of mustard in there, y'all. Because I like that mustard taste in my, um... Yeah, that, about a tablespoon. Yeah, okay, tablespoon. That's it. You don't want too much in there. But um, anyway, you don't want to kill the taste of the macaroni. And now I have to get the carnation milk. Oh, my God, I don't know what happened to the carnation milk, y'all. But it was around here. Uh, that's the that's the can, but I need the milk itself. So what I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm going to go look for the carnation milk. I think I accidentally put it back into the... Um, oh, there's some in here. Yeah, so let's use this one here. And you would need about... Let's try this. This is about... Yeah, okay. Pour that in there, y'all. That, that was the dish for the butter, y'all right. Um, and to stir it. Stir that sucker in there, okay? Keep stirring it. And see, this is the consistency y'all want. You got it? Okay. Yeah, you can put black pepper. You can put um, salt in here. Let me see. I think I... Mm, that's good, y'all. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm, put no more salt in here, y'all. Mm-mm. This is just right. Mm-hmm. So when I come back, now we're going to get the bowl, and we're going to put it in this bowl. Don't forget now, the egg will hold it together. I only put one egg because I'm not an egg person, and um, some people will use um, flour to hold it together, uh, starch. Because if you're not an egg person, that's the only substitute I can think of, y'all. Yeah, that's what I can think of. There's a little bit of butter in here. So we're going to pour that in there. So you stir it, and you stir it good. Just stir it all up in there. Get it all up up in there. Now you see how that look, y'all? Don't that look good? Yeah, that's macaroni and cheese. You got it. That's it. That's the old time way. Yep. Old-fashioned macaroni and cheese. And if you want, you can put some. Let me see if I got some here. I might have some. A little bit of. Uh, yeah. A little bit of this. Some red pepper in there. Yeah, put some red pepper in there. Okay. Yeah, you can put some red pepper in there. If you want that taste in there. I don't have enough cut up yet, y'all, so... Let me see if I can cut up some more in there. I'll be, I'll be right back, y'all. Hold on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut up. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. So we're going to cut up some. Yeah, we're going to cut up some, some jalapeno pepper into, I'm doing something fancy. I usually don't do fancy macaroni and cheese. But I want to do something fancy today, y'all, okay? So we can cut up some of this, and it's just going to have that flavor in it. Take the seed out if you don't want the seed, because it's going to be hot. So I'm just going to dash up this little piece here, just to give you like a, a little flavor of it, okay? So that's what we're going to have. Yeah, just a little flavor. Then we take it, and we're going to dice this up. No, we haven't even gotten to the rice yet, but I'm going to show y'all all that. I'm going to tell y'all how to cook that, okay? Because I can't be on, on YouTube forever and social media forever, okay? So I'm going to tell y'all how to cook the rice, and I may come on and show y'all how to cook it, but my time is limited. And this is a full meal course we're doing for, you know, the holidays, so you have to bear with me. Try to do my best for my decor people and for my lovely family and friends out there. So, hope y'all have a good holiday and I hope your New Year's be a blessed New Year's, y'all. Yeah, okay. So you need something green to bring in the New Year's, okay? So what I was gonna cook was asparagus, but 
I haven't gotten to the store yet, so I will, when I plate up the table, uh, plate tomorrow, I'll show y'all. And how you cook the asparagus? You just put your season on it, put some butter in it, in a foil, wrap it in, put it in the pan, and put it in the um, oven, and it will come out so nice and crispy and juicy. Okay, so here we go, y'all. <clears throat> We're gonna switch over to here, and this now is going in the baking pan. Because we use that for mixing this bowl. Look at that. You see how the cheese all melted up there now? You didn't think that would happen, right? But it did. Just take time and patience. Back in those days, they had time and patience. They were housewives. Some of them was housewives. And now we have to have the same patience of. So that's it. So now y'all see how that was made. And all you do is just fix it in here like so. Okay. Just fix it in here like so. Okay, spread it, and you can see your jalapeno pepper. You can see some of your bell pepper, red bell pepper. Okay, and you got all this cheese. And if you want, you can put some cheese on the top. Yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can put some cheese on the top. But usually, let me see. I thought I had my season out here. Uh, I'm looking for my paprika. Uh, you can put paprika on top of that. Oh, Lord, y'all. I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time. I'm trying to move as fast as I can. I had all my season out, would you believe it? But now I can't find anything. But however, whenever the paprika decides to show back up, we can put some paprika on here, okay? But right now what we're going to do is just put the cheese. Put the cheese, oh, yeah. So we're going to put some paprika on here, y'all. Yeah, put the cheese on. Mm -hmm. Put your cheese on. You can put white and you can put um, whatever color you want on here, y'all. You know, so. Yeah, there you have it, okay? Now, you got this beautiful macaroni for New Year's Day with something green in it. Let's shake a little bit of this on. And you can get, like, um, uh, a certain type of uh, paprika. But there it goes. And he's ready to go in the oven. While we're putting him in the oven, we're going to check on what? We're going to check on the ribs. So let's put them in the oven. Okay. Let's bring out the ribs. Mm -hmm. Let's see how he's doing. Okay. Put him in. Hold that because, yeah, he's in now. And it takes about roughly, let's see, it's now 2.30. It takes about a half an hour for the macaroni to cook. Depends on the stove, okay? So, <clears throat> While this is out, this is for the candy yams that I'm going to cook. Where's the beef? Right there, y'all. Can y'all see the beef over here? Oh, let me see. I got to bring it up. Okay, so here's the beef, y'all. Isn't that good? Mustard glazed beef. Right. Okay, so I'll be signing out, and I will be bringing y'all some more from Sweet Sugar Plum Home Comfort Food. I
sip of plum pie. What a comfort.